Hey guys, welcome back. So I've decided to reboot the tutorial on Vaforia because I did do the workshop, but I didn't get uh, enough time to go over everything properly. So I feel like some people know how to make a project, some people don't. So let's just do it all over again, but a little slower. So um, if you watched the other video, you should already have the Vaforia engine installed. You should have your code editor installed and you should have Unity installed. So I'm going to open up Unity Hub. Um, go ahead and create a new project, 3D, and part. Well, let's just go Unity and Euphoria part one, our first app. Let's create it. And to keep the video as short as possible, I'm going to pause while it loads my first project. All right, so my project loaded. And for any Vuforia project, you don't use a default camera, so let's delete that. Always delete the camera first, the main. And then what you need to do is to make sure that um, you are uh, activating your AR camera, is you gotta go into File, Build Settings, Player Settings, and on the right-hand side on XR, you're going to select Vuforia Augmented Reality Supported and just click it once because it usually takes a little bit to load. Oh, double click the back accident. Now once that's done, you can go ahead and close this. If you get an error here, the Vulcan, it's going to be under Other. Vulcan will be under uh, Color. Just select it and hit the little minus button on the right hand side. If you don't, then you can just ignore that. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that out, close that out, and the first thing you need to do is import the camera. So let's go to game object on the top, for an engine, AR camera, import. And the camera takes two things, or it takes one thing in order to trigger the event that something's tracked. Uh, marked image, something that was tagged. And to get an image uh, tagged, you have to go into the developer before a developer. So let's go to developer.euphoria.com. And you should have created an account um, if you watched the first video. So then log into your account. I have mine saved already. And then you're going to go to target manager and you're going to create a new database, which is like adding a folder. If you already did, then you will have a folder here. If not, go ahead and hit add. Part. Part two. Leave it under device. And then we find an image we want tagged. Now, I already have uh, an image that I want tagged, and I already have one tag, but let's just re, re tag the image. So I'm going to take this picture here, and I want to re tag that one. So what I do is open up my new database, part two. Now I'm going to click add target. I'm going to look for that picture on my desktop. There it is. Open. If you get an error that it's too big, um, it tells you right here the max size is 2 megabytes. Or megabits, whatever that is. But um, you can always check the size of a picture or how big it is. And this is the size. So it's a lot smaller. So we're good. All right, let's go back here. I'm gonna put one for the width. Add. It's processing. I'll wait for it to process. Usually, I kick start it by backing out, and going back in, and it's active. Now, the tag rating. Generally, you want the more tags, the better. However, you can make an exception for certain images. For example, mine has two letters. So in reality, if it picked up one letter, that'd be okay. So let's see if I can use this image. Let's click on it, scroll down to the bottom, hit show features. This is gonna show us the, the markers that it placed on the image. Let's see if it has enough. And for my project, it's gonna have enough. Like I said, it's two letters. It doesn't matter which letter it picks up for me. As long as it picks up a letter, then I'm okay. And it has plenty of markers on the C and plenty of markers to the right side of the R. So I know that the left side of the R is not really going to be too good for me, but again, I have enough for what I need. Hide features. 
Now let's download our library by our database by selecting the image if just one one image or if you want all the images inside this database you just click download all but since there's only one all means one select unity editor download and before I open this package let's go back into unity now we're gonna go into game object 3d object or excuse me before our engine image image is her an image that's been tagged from our database so let's click on that and let's hit import by default it's probably gonna bring the unity sample um, package that's fine and again it's doing this error where it doesn't bring out my air our camera and it doesn't bring out the image target so I'm gonna import it again and eventually we'll see two of them same thing for our engine AR camera now notice when I brought the camera it nested it and just tabbed over means it is now a child of the image target let's take the camera drag it out and now if they're aligned the same that means they're they're in the same hierarchy they're not um, nested under each other I'm gonna bring this under just so it's cameras on top now if you click on the image target to your right you have the properties I call it it's the inspector here is where you can see image target behavior and here's where we see the database so by default it has before your Mars images this is what comes with the before engine as sample so what we're gonna do is now click on the package and it's gonna import to uh, or it should import to unity alright when you click on your package it'll open up unity again and hit import and now let's delete this one for me it, it brought it the image target again uh, it was delayed so now when you click on here you'll have two databases by default is the before a Mars one but here's the one you downloaded now what we want to do is I'm gonna take my game tab and bring it over here by project so I could see what my camera is seeing so let's see if we can scroll back all right the image target I'll make that a little bit bigger let's uh, make it two and then where's our camera looking at? So zoom out. Let's mess around with our camera. Alright. Zoom back in. Let's see where our camera is. Okay. All right, so they're a little off. Let me unrotate my camera. Move it back to zero. Alright, what do we look at? There we go. Just play around with your camera to get it to the right angle. Let's zoom in. Let's go here. Alright, so now you can kind of see what the camera sees is anything that's in here. So let's go to image target. Let's pull this guy back. Let's give it a little rotation. So this is the X axis right here. So let's see what happens if I do 90. See that looks okay. No. Let's do 180. No. How about negative 90. There you go. Negative 90 for me worked. All right. So now my camera sees it. Then just aligning this. Let's align the center. Okay. So I'm happy with my alignment. Now I'm gonna nest the image target under my camera. I'm gonna go to game object on the top and let's bring something to be displayed when it detects my image so I'm gonna go to cube and I'm gonna bring this cube forward now we're gonna fix the size here so we're gonna click on this one here which is a scale tool I'm gonna shrink it this way that way this way that way okay I'm gonna click back on the move tool bring it up a little bit Let's add some, uh, let's add some texture to that. So let's go here, and our assets is our main folder. So I'm going to create a new folder to hold an image. I don't have to, but just to be a little more organized. And you can drag and drop images. So I'm going to drag and drop. Let's go with this web slinger. So I'm going to bring this into images. Open the images folder. I'm going to drag and drop it right onto the cube, and let's see what it looks like. Okay. 
So now my image is upside down. So let's rotate the cube. So let's click on the cube. And we need to spin it this way. So it looks like it's the Z. So let's spin it 180. And there we go. It's a line. That looks good. Now let's drop the cube under image target. Since now we're done moving it around. And I have this image on my phone. You need to either have it printed or on, your, on a device of some sort so the camera can detect it. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to hit play. And if everything works fine, we should get this displaying and working. Let's see. Camera takes a few seconds, so there we go. And so come on. I get a reflection here. Let's find out why. And this target. Playing fine. Let's see. Oh, my license key for some reason is gone. Let's go get my license key back. Copy that. All right, it's a little buggy there. So let's try this again. Let's hit play. Let's see if this works. There we go. So, simple image. Now notice in the bottom of my screen where it says trackable and it tells you the name object, it says found, lost, found, lost. That's going to be helpful or useful in a later video where I show you how to place sound based on if the image is tracked, which is found, or lost. So now let's add a little bit more functionality to it. So let's add a script. So we're going to create a new C Sharp script. And let's name this Rotate. You click on the script and it should show you a preview of the code inside. So as you can see, it's empty right now. So start was when uh, the game is started or the you, you know project starts, your application. And void update is uh, once per frame. So we're going to up date uh, once per frame and we're going to add a public variable which unity you'll see here in a second so let's open this reload it okay um, let's start with our public variable and make sure that unity sees our public variable so public int we're going to name it speed save that and unity should refresh it and there it is so Here's our cube. Let's attach the script to the cube by bringing it right over here and attach it. Now here's our script and here's our public variable. I'm going to set this to 40. Let's go back into our script. Now we need to do what's called a transform. There's two of them. There's one with a capital T and one with a lowercase t. We want to get the lowercase t one. So transform. Now rotate with a capital T. And it's going to take um, the vector, the new vector 3. And vector 3 takes three things. It takes x, y, and z. We need our uh, curly brackets, or not our curly brackets, we need a semicolon to close this off. So we want to rotate this on either x, y, or z. So let's find out which angle or what axis we want to rotate it on. So we want to rotate it on the y. If we rotate on the y, it's going to spin kind of like this. So let's test that out. <clears throat> and you need to multiply the speed times time dot delta time for this to work. Hit save. Go back. <clears throat> Hit play. Wait for my camera to load. Bring the image back up. And let's see if it uh, rotates. There you go. So it's rotating. Now if I wanted to rotate and a different axis again, I can just change the axis. And that's it. We have our first little project. We got an image to display when marked and uh, when found, and we got it to rotate when found. All right? I hope you guys enjoyed this first part. I'll see you in the next one.